The earliest story about witchcraft in Warwickshire concerns these standing stones on a ridge above Long Compton village and known locally as the Rollright Stones. Well, legend has it that a marauding king and his army came past here and were met by a local witch who clearly had the interests of England very much at heart. She said to the king, seven long strides shalt thou take, if Long Compton thou canst see, then king of England thou shalt be. The king replied, stick, stock, stone, as king of England I shall be known. Well, after he'd taken his seven strides, all he could see, sadly, was a great earth mound, which completely blocked his view of Long Compton. Then the witch cried out, since Long Compton thou canst not see, king of England thou shalt not be, and immediately she turned the lot of them into stone. And here they've stood ever since, locked forever in silent conspiracy. The king himself stands apart and aloof, locked in his own petrified hell. And he has to witness the covens of witches who even in these modern times visit the Rollright stones in the dead of night and dance naked around his unmoving form. Today, one of Warwickshire's best-known witches is Irene Ison. In fact, she's been called the Queen of English Witches. At that time, a witch was an accepted part of every community. Every village has its wise woman who looked after the sick, who took care of the animals, who delivered the babies, and who was a sort of apothecary. And a weather forecaster too, I believe. Oh, of course. Yes, that was one of her primary things. They would knock on the door and, and tell you what the day was going to be like, and that the farmers would act according to her instructions. So let's get this absolutely clear then about the early witches. They weren't in any way sinister people at all. They were they were people with particular talents or oh, or whatever. Course. Yeah, they were meant for amatory purposes. If you wanted to uh, lose your lover or bring a lover back or anything like that, then you went to her for a potion. So they had special powers. They weren't just physical powers, though, were they? There must have been a degree of clairvoyance in them. Oh, they were the first clairvoyance, but they didn't understand at that time the power that they had, but they used it um, to the, the best of their abilities. Warwickshire people seem to have the same kind of affinity with witchcraft that the Welsh have with singing. It comes easily to them, largely perhaps because of the county's strong agricultural tradition. To the rural folk, their local witch was somebody to be respected rather than feared, until James I came along. All around Warwickshire, even in old churches, you can still find chilling reminders of the persecutions. The story they tell is of savagery and injustice on a monumental scale. Irene, what, what is... The significance, then, of this old chest? It was called a telltale chest. They were in most of the churches throughout Warwickshire. I haven't been able to discover any anywhere else. And what happened is, when you came to church on Sunday, if you wanted to accuse someone of being a witch, then you popped in your bit of parchment with the name on, and you'll see, if you look very carefully, that there are three spaces. Yes, there. we can put it down. Hang yeah. on, let's just listen to that noise for a minute. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Every yeah. old church ought to have yes. The creaks of years. So it would be locked, would it, when, That's right. when the people came it to was, church? It was kept locked, and it had three separate locks, one here, one there. And one over my side. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the inquisitors, all after church, they would undo each separate lock. Because each one had a key, presumably. That's right. A separate key. Obviously, not, uh, one key didn't open all three locks. And they undid it, they read the name, and they tortured the person until they confessed. And by confessing or suggesting names of hundreds of other witches, as many as you could possibly think of, the more you thought of, the better, then it meant from that point that either you would be freed or you would be burnt. So really, the only way you could save your own neck was to accuse somebody else? Preferably richer. Preferably richer? Yes. Why? Because, because it cost money to be tortured. Indeed. This is how the Inquisitors made their money. Uh, they would charge you for breaking your toenails or burning you. So they actually charge for the wood in some cases. How many witches were killed altogether during that worst period of something around, what, 65 years? Well, it has been said around 600,000 throughout Europe, but I think in Britain there must have been around 200,000. That's an incredible number of people. And presumably you'd say that very few of those were actually witches. Hardly any at all, because all they were were harmless fortune tellers. The witch mania subsided almost as rapidly as it had built up. 
The last legal conviction for witchcraft in Britain was in 1712. But the last laws dealing with witchcraft as a fraudulent practice of the occult weren't wiped off the statute books until 1951.